I need to actually build a CE, right? So what do I do? So I've got actually, I've got a, a little banner along the bottom of the page just to get people to the documentation for this process in case you want to follow along at home and see where we are. Um, at this point, the last thing that we did, if you're following along on the Create KBM Libvert site, is we just enabled huge pages on Jason's host. So you got to have virtualization support for your host. Uh, you've got to have huge pages on there as well. So then there, we also have uh, create virtual network after this, which Jason, I know you've already done this. Your KVM setup is good to go. So bridge networking is a really great way to go if you want to just do the easiest way to get this thing connected and up on your network. That means you're going to be using your native DHCP services on your home network or whatever network you're in, and it'll allow you really great flexibility. Now, the additional piece that we put in there, uh, I created three. Uh, yep. You only have to have the one to connect your uh, your CE into your local network, but I wanted to have a couple host only networks on my nook so that I can test because I also have the Ubuntu text bo test box on there and a big IP. And so I have those in host only networks to be able to test client server traffic internal to the box that are not accessible to the outside. And so it could just keep all that traffic, not knocking uh, TV off. Cause you know, if the TV gets knocked off the network, I get yells down the stairs and you know, nobody wants that. So I'm going to say you, you've already gone through the network portion and now the next piece is to install the node. So we're not going to do that with the terminal, which you can do. We are going to move to using the virtual machine manager that, that Jason's already got there. We're going to install from ISO on this one. So if you want to fire up a brand new installation there, we can get going. Okay, so, so connection there. Yep. Local install from media, right? Yep. And forward. Yeah. Now this one, you're gonna select your, you drop that in your images, I saw it. So that is just selecting the ISO that we downloaded previously. You can find the download location in the dock that's that's scrolling across the bottom of the screen. And CentOS 7 is what you wanna pick here because that is the base uh, of the OS at this point. Go ahead. And that's what it says in my fancy little uh, file name too. So just, <laughs> that's right. just following along. All right, good to go, Ford? Yep, that's all we need okay. here. All right. Now, memory, okay. I, I'm pretty sure we need a little bit more than one, um, <laughs> one, one gig. What I've been told as of today by the North American Distributed Cloud Architects was 12 gig minimum. I did 16. 16 is just a nice round number. Thanks, Matt Harmon, for convincing me. Didn't have to twist my arm too hard. You want 16 gig and four cores. All right. And disk, we probably need a little bit more than that. I did 500. Uh, the reason being, I wanted to go with a, we're going to do Kubernetes here. So if we want to do some larger disk claims or things like that, we're going to have a little bit more flexibility. I'll do 50 gig for now. So I don't fill that up. Okay. Let me and change, that. Yeah. change your name. And customize customized. before. Always and customize. That, bridge network. That's what I want. All right. The things you want to change here, you want to make sure that the NIC is Vert.io. So if you find the NIC in the left-hand side. Uh, NIC, Vert.io. It is Vert.io. And you want to make sure that your CPUs match the current configuration. So go up in CPUs and copy host is good. Can you expand the topology there just to make sure that that kind of, yeah. So for, for sockets, one core. That, I mean, this this looks good. And if you go to the overview, I just, I always take a look at the overview one last time okay, now I you had mentioned one thing that that cache mode was something you used to disable but that's not we don't have to do that anymore you know they used to mention it right on the documentation and they don't mention it there anymore so you can disable write cache i think is a thing there if you really want to all right the overview looks good to me you've got your name correct uh, go ahead and begin installation in the upper left hand so now this part does take a little bit but we'll we'll go through it now that you can see, we've got the console here and we can do install. All right, so log in. Admin. Login is the, uh, and then the password is uh, by default. I haven't looked at the documentation. So um, it's RTFM. Capital, capital V. So it's Volterra123. That's just the default. So yeah. uh -huh. that is a very secure security company password. But yeah, default. Got it. <laughs> so we're going to um, 
you're going to want to enter. The, the nice thing about it is it forces you to create your new password immediately. So if you go ahead and type in the, the password that you just entered, Volterra123. Oh, okay. With a capital V at the beginning. That's the admin. Yep. And then new password. Then I messaged you uh, in Teams with what okay. I set the password to. So we'll have uniformity. So now hit enter and we should be good to go as long as they match. So from <laughs> here, this is uh, like, I, I like doing this. At this point, I like to abandon the terminal if I can, this terminal. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a, you got a, a couple of different things you can do. You can do get dash config and hit okay. enter. Now, if you can scroll up, your IP address is buried in that scribble somewhere. Or... <laughs> The way that I oh, do this it, is a uh, yeah. I don't think I can scroll up. Right. The way that I do it in the in the in the the vert manager window is I do health. So not in the docs, right? This isn't in the docs, mm -hmm. but I figured out that health will give me the same uh, information. So you'll and it, and it is piped to uh, either less or more. Less is more, whatever. Yeah. Um, and so you should be able to see an IP address in there at the top. So yep, you can it's in there. You you got it. Okay, good. Yep, so I can um, come so over here and SSH as admin to it with your new password. So now once we've SSH'd in here with the new password again, for anyone who's just kind of joining, um, we're going to start configuring this distributed cloud CE that is built on KVM and Linux on an Intel NUC. We're going to just do site redundancy. So single node clusters is fine for us. And then, ah, now I, I did not do my lat and long. I, this, this is something that you need for your CEs so that you can find them on the map. Otherwise they turn up uh, at zero, zero uh, out in the middle of the ocean, which is nasty. It's hard to find. And it, it's confusing the first time you do it. How, how do you go about get finding that? Do you just do that on Google maps? I do maps.google.com and I look up a place that for my demos that I want to do. So I did Nick Tahoe's in Rochester, New York. If you've ever had a garbage plate, the gateway arch. Okay, perfect. You got to right click on that or click on it rather and then click on the lat long. I just put that in a text file and save it because I, you know, I use that fairly frequently for my my distributed cloud demos. So and then it's lat first and then long. Yep. Fleet name, what the heck is that? So fleet name is we can leave that alone for now. Uh, fleeting is something that you can do to establish uh, configurations that are essentially stampable uh, over and over and over again. So just hit oh. enter at this point. All right. And we want to make sure that we do a KVM volt stack combo here. Now, this is essentially in analogous to hardware uh, and, and software combination. So we're saying that with the volt stack, we are wanting to actually have the application portion, not just the networking, but, but both all in one. So go ahead and hit that guy and enter. Okay. And we're doing KVM because that's the virtualization that we're using, right? That's, so that's if right. you were setting it up, not the way we're doing it, you would pick possibly a different one yep generic okay. I, I would think okay and then f zero is it all right confirm confirm yes okay. and you are good to go at this point we need to complete the registration for the node because at this point now that he's already put the configuration in we've got the appropriate key um it's going to reach out it being the the customer edge node is going to reach out to the distributed cloud but you're going to have to log back into the distributed cloud console. Okay. And so under management, uh, under manage, you're going to go to site management. Okay. And now here we go to registrations. Now you okay. have a pending registration here. So you want to click the green checkbox or blue checkbox. Sorry. Looks green. Here. You're good. You're good. Um, so you've got your JRDC site. You've got that it's a CE. The cluster size is one. Yep. So that's, that's mm -hmm. correct. Now, if you are doing a multi multi-node cluster, all you have to do is set it to three and then understand that you won't complete registration until all three are up and functional and have gone through this process. Now, if you head to the bottom of the page, save. So okay. at this point, if you click on the site map, you, you should be able to see that we are, are, are both there in North America as you zoom in. Okay, so there's AKDC site. Mine is green there, and then yours is currently. Now, if you click on that guy, mm -hmm. it's going to bring up a sub menu to show you exactly what's going on on the right hand side. Now, this you can see what uh, your regional edges are in the middle on the right, and they're both red, meaning you're not establishing communication with them yet. 
Now, if we want to troubleshoot this, because this is one of those things that I was very hot on, like, well, where, where am I? I want to know what's going on with my installation. That's, I mean, you're probably a guy that, you know, tail dash F, you know, var log messages and give me the, whatnot. yeah, I don't know while you were talking, I don't know if you saw, I was like, Hey, how do I log? How do I log? Cause I'm, I'm down here. I so want to see what's going wanna, on. Actually, let's do it in both places. Go to, go back to the command line, do a log VPM. I think it is. Yep. And then if you hit shift G, that's going to take you to the end. There you go. Now, okay. one of my, and I, I'm going to say it live, one of the things that I recommended as, a, as a, um, an addition to the product would be to pipe this thing to less rather than to more. But it, it's already registered publicly in the, in the old Volterra Asks site. So um, we'll see if they get that in there. But at least this will show you where you are. Now, most of the time, if you continue to, like, I, I hit Q and then up arrow and enter again, then if you shift G. G. And see, you, you may or may not have different things now. Most of the time, what this is, is a couple of different things. You're going to see all kinds of Ike stuff, things uh, about IPsec setting up and wanting to actually create those tunnels. And then you're also going to see things having to do with the Kubernetes cluster being brought up. So those are the, those are the kinds of messages that we'll have there. <laughs> All right. Well, that looks it look, looks like we're making progress because it's downloading stuff now. Absolutely. So there's all kinds of it's kind of mumbo jumbo, if you will, though, if you're not used to really scrolling through logs, that can be daunting. So if we take a look here um, back in the console at the site list this time, Jason, and let's go into the expanded view from the site list of your node. You can see there that it's still in a provisioning state. But if you go if you scroll to the right and under actions um manage configuration yeah so don't expand don't expand that uh click on your site rather yours went down yeah i see that that's uh that's what'd you do man <laughs> it, it could be updating at this point but so yeah. with yours one of the things that that i like to show off here is if we go into nodes uh, you can see where your CPU and memory is, but if you click on your node itself, that'll also take you into the interfaces and it'll let you see kind of what the process is and, and where in the process you are. So in the top left, your update status is what? In progress. I'm looking for updates. To, oh, right there. Okay, gotcha. So that is is one thing to take a look at. And if we kind of, if you use the back arrow to go back, then if you scroll to the right on the top, there is... At the very end, you've got tools. I like the tools. This will let you take a look at the log. So how many lines do you want to see? Do you want to see 200? Do you want to see 5,000? That's all very good. This will also allow you to ping anything from your node. If you need to ping local containers that are inside your node, you can do that. If you need to ping an upstream router from your node or an upstream system, you can also do that here as well. You can do TCP dumps and trace routes, uh, get an idea of what routes are there and show BGP relationships from your peers. This to me is a, a really critical thing to understand if you're trying to troubleshoot your node coming up for the very first time. 